morning. Everybody wake up. We are uh, glad that you all remembered to set your clocks ahead or that you woke up early in a panic because, you're, uh, because of your clocks. Um, we got ours set ahead except we made it p.m. instead of a.m. So there's almost a big empty place up here this morning. So um, anyway, I want to welcome everybody to Olive Branch this morning. We're going to start with a few announcements. Um, our Bible studies continue. Uh, Tom uh, leads a Bible study on Tuesday night here at 6.30. And uh, we've been going through Matthew, but we're going to stop this week. And we're going to have, uh, we're going to kind of slide in uh, a discussion about the rapture and the second coming. So if that's ever interested you, um, we invite you to come. It's 6.30 tonight. Um, so that will be or 6.30 Tuesday night tonight. Um, but we, we encourage you to, to come to that if you've ever had any interest in, uh, in, in exactly what the rapture is and, and will be and the second coming and, and the church's role in that. Uh, we're going we're gonna to stick, stick a, a section in this Tuesday night at 6.30. So we invite you to be here. Um, Melissa continues her Bible study on Wednesday night, a women's Bible study. Uh, on Women of the Bible, and it's here at 6.30 on Wednesday. Uh, happens in that room right over there. Uh, so each of those ladies, uh, each of those subjects is, is its own person. So if you haven't been here for any of it, it you haven't missed out, you can, still, um, you can still be a part of that. That's Wednesday nights at 6.30. Uh, we will be hosting uh, the Long Run Association Palm Sunday service here. Um, on Palm Sunday the 28th, that's two weeks from t today, um, at 6 p.m. So we're, uh, we're are excited about that. Uh, Mike, can you get some chairs? Or, thanks. Um, so there's no food that day, so we don't have to worry about cooking or anything like that, but we are gonna host that uh, on the 28th at 6 p.m. Um, Center Square Baptist Church invites the, the association to their Monday Thursday service which is, uh, uh, I believe that's Thursday, April 1st. Um, it's the Thursday of Easter week. Um, and then Mount Sterling invites the association to come to its Good Friday service on Friday, uh, Good Friday of Easter. And, and uh, they will be having that service at Switzerland Baptist. So um, you're up to date on that. Um, we normally have Lenten services uh, through the Lenten season. Uh, I, we are not having those this year, but uh, when we're here on Palm Sunday night, um, we're going to take a, uh, the churches are all bringing a special offering um, to, the, we'll all go to the camp at Westport. So uh, you may uh, think about that, pray over your participation in that. Uh, my daughter Emily's virtual baby shower is th this coming Sunday, a week from today. Um, uh, I don't know what time it starts. It's, huh? Two o'clock maybe? I, I don't know. It's virtual. Um, we're, we're, we're virtually having a baby shower. Um, so if uh, uh, everybody's invited to be a part of that. Um, uh, offering plates are in the back uh, and continuing to comply with COVID restrictions from the state. We're not passing things around. So uh, if you would like to uh, support uh, the work of the church, they're offering plates back there. Uh, also, we have an e-giving platform, if that interests you at all, where you, uh, uh, you can see me or Tristan, I think, uh, and we can, uh, we can give you the, the specs. It's real easy to do that. Um, Big Stuff 2021 is June the 21st through the 25th. Um, if, if you are planning on going, if you're middle schooler or high schooler planning on going, and if you're planning on going as an adult uh, chaperone, uh, let, please let Jenny or I know. Um, <clears throat> there's some new, uh, new things going on down there. Uh, so we need, to, we need to firm up our number here as soon as possible. So um, we uh, invite you to pray about that. So those are our announcements for the week. Um, our prayer list continues to get longer, um, unfortunately, but uh, also fortunately that we were able to gather together and, 
and, and share these. Uh, Jill Cooley continues to uh, be in her uh, rehab facility. Uh, we continue to pray for Jill. Uh, Earl Bowling, uh, he had some more issues this week. Uh, I'm not sure if he ended up in the hospital or not, but I know the doctor was wanting him to go. So, um, but at that point he had not gone. So uh, continue to pray for Earl. Uh, Logan Day, um, our, our new buddy. Uh, Logan is continuing to battle. So he's an eight year old, eight year old and he continues to battle uh, some health issues. Um, Angie Altoff is uh, gonna have neck surgery this Friday. So um, we ask everybody to uh, keep Angie in, in your prayers. Uh, Bob Tucker is back with us again. Uh, um, he and Lois, Bob's had a biopsy last week and he'll, he's going back to a doctor on Wednesday. So we want to continue to pray for Bob. Um, Billy Joe Holcomb and Tyler Elsey, um, members of our church family, uh, uh, Billy suffered a miscarriage this week. And uh, so uh, want to continue to remember that young family. Uh, Hannah Hart's mom is in the hospital. Uh, Suzanne Dashkovich, did I say that right? Um, she's having hip replacement surgery. And uh, so she works down at, at the school uh, at Jeff Craig. So I uh, want to remember her. Uh, Joni Markham and her family. Joni is Jaquita's aunt. Uh, she lives out in California. Uh, she's had ongoing chronic health issues. Um, She's really not that old, uh, but she has had chronic health issues for about as long as I've known Jaquita. Um, <clears throat> and uh, she's been placed in hospice care this week, has two sons. So uh, we ask that you remember Joni. Uh, the Rick McKay family, uh, Rick, many of you know, uh, he passed away this week. Um, Anna Fields had surgery on her face um, and she is continuing to recover. Uh, our granddaughter Ainsley Fox is going to have her tonsils out next week, tonsils and adenoids. Um, so we ask that you remember her. Uh, Rick Wheels did have his medical procedure and it was uh, successful. So uh, we praise God for that and we also uh, continue to lift him up uh, in, uh, in prayer as he continues to recover. Uh, Steve Fritter uh, is in Swiss Villa Nursing Home. So we want to remember Steve and his family. Uh, Bob's army buddy, Pete Blake, uh, Portland, Portland, Oregon, uh, is having some uh, health issues. So we want to remember uh, Pete. Uh, Lisa Park's mom, Elizabeth Hall, uh, she's in Charleston, South Carolina, and she's continuing. Uh, uh, last I talked to Paul, Miss um, Hall needed some uh, uh, a bypass surgery, but in her age and condition, the doctors didn't want to do that. So um, I believe Lisa has been with her in Charleston, so we want to continue to remember her. Um, uh, Ken Byers uh, continues to recover. Um, and you might see, if you're on Facebook, you might see daily updates from Sylvia. Um, he has been moved to a, a, another part of the hospital and continues uh, to show some signs of progress uh, very slowly, but they are, they are signs of progress. So we continue to pr uh, pray for Ken. Uh, Jim and Beth Kincaid, uh, Bob's, uh, our friends, our volunteer Christian builder friends from Texas. Uh, Bob talked to Jim this week and said he's sounding amazingly well. He's doing, he's recovering from his surgery. Uh, I talked to Beth and uh, she's been undergoing some cancer treatments and uh, she, uh, let me know that she has completed those treatments. So we're blessed by that. Uh, Paul Hankinson continues to do better uh, as he recovers. And uh, also we just continue to remember our frontline healthcare workers. Uh, uh, we're beginning to see a lot of good news in terms of COVID, but um, <clears throat> we haven't beaten it yet. So um, those, those folks are, are going to work every day and, and uh, just putting themselves in harm's way for everybody's benefit. Bobby, um, I'm going to ask if you would uh, lead us in a word of prayer for these uh, for these prayers today. Father. Amen. Everybody, will please stand. We're starting with congregational songs of Jesus Messiah.
Christ Messiah Name above all names Blessed Redeemer Emmanuel The rescue for sin
Would you please pray for us? Who knows the difference between uh, the the significant difference between a ham and egg breakfast? I've always been told the difference is uh, the the chicken has made a contribution, but the pig has made a sacrifice, right? And uh, we've uh, been talking about Lent and the Lenten season for the past few weeks as uh, as we head towards Easter Sunday. And uh, today, as we move towards Easter, um, I want us to look at what it means to sacrifice. Um, what types of sacrifice do we make? It, it uh, may have surprised some of you um, that I shared uh, when we began this journey together at the beginning of Lent. Um, Lent starts on Ash Wednesday. 
Um, but immediately prior to Lent is the celebration of Mardi Gras. And, uh, you know, Mardi Gras was one of those things that you, know, you always knew was going on. But, but it, uh, uh, fam- most famously in New Orleans, but Mardi Gras celebrations are held all over the world. And, and like me, you may wonder how those two events, Mardi Gras, one of the wildest celebrations that we know, and Lent, which is uh, a time of drawing near to God, how those two things mesh together. Um, it's actually actually pretty simple, really. Uh, people who celebrate Mardi Gras are human. Um, and uh, sometimes we, we forget our failings uh, and our shortcomings as human beings. Um, but uh, those people know that in just a few days, as they celebrate Mardi Gras, uh, they're going to spend the next 40 or 50 days, depending on how you count the Lenten season, um, doing without right? Um, So they're going to get all of their fun in before it's too late. Um, They're going to have this big celebration before this time of sacrifice begins. And if if we're honest, uh, if you're going to begin some kind of a journey, uh, you'd want to spend those final few days with family and friends, right? Uh, Before you leave. Uh, When someone goes in the military and begins basic training, most of the time before they ship out, you know, parties are held and celebrations of one kind or another take place. Um, or when you make a decision to start a diet or change your lifestyle in some way, um, you, you may have this specific date to begin, right? Um, and sometimes those days leading up to that date are, are filled with eating all of those things that you know you're going to have to do without when you start your diet, right? Um, Amen. There you go. Um, But in terms of Mardi Gras, the celebration ends the night before Ash Wednesday with a day that that is referred to as Fat Tuesday. Um, And you may be wondering why. Well, you know, if you think back to when the celebration of Lent began, the Lenten season began... Remember, it, it's considered a religious holiday. It's on the church calendar, uh, but it, it wasn't in the Bible. There's, there's no account in the Bible of, of people celebrating Lent. And uh, so, so in early times, there, there wasn't much refrigeration or storage, right, available when, when it came to your food. So when you got your food supplies back then, you used them up as quickly as you could, so that they wouldn't spoil or rot or go bad, right? Because you didn't really have any way to preserve them. Well, well, that's where Fat Tuesday comes in, knowing that, that for the next 40 days, they weren't going to be uh, permitted to eat certain things. In the days leading up to Ash Wednesday, they would eat like crazy in order not to waste their spoilable food. Um, you know, if you weren't going to eat meat for the next month, uh, you better eat it now, because a month from now, it's not going to be any good. So rather than throw it away, they would eat it. And so leading up to Ash Wednesday when Lent began and you gave all this stuff up, there was this period of time where people were literally (laughs) stuffing their faces trying to eat all this food up so it wouldn't go bad while they were sacrificing. Okay. But uh, so then and now, um, their sacrifice didn't happen before they loaded up and and ate all kinds of stuff just in case, right? Just in case, I better eat all of this. So this morning, we're going to talk about sacrifice. Not only during this season, this Lenten season, Easter season, but but how we look at it every day. Um, Not only our sacrifices, but the ultimate sacrifice that was made for us. Our scripture this morning is found in Romans. Uh, It's a letter written by Paul. Uh, And if if you've got your Bibles, uh, you can turn there. If if not, it's going to be, the scripture's going to be up on the screen. Um, But uh, uh, Paul wrote Romans, and in your Bible, the New Testament starts with the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then there's Acts of the Apostles, or Acts, and then we get to Romans. So if you're looking for it, it's right in there somewhere. Um, And here, Paul is very clear when he speaks of sacrifice, 
what it means not only to those folks then, but I believe to us now. So we are reading a few verses in Romans chapter 3, and I'm going to begin in verse 25. Romans chapter 3, verse 25 says, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because of his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand and unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time. So as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So when's the reading of God's word? Pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to gather here. And I would just ask that, Father, you would not only open our minds, but you would open our hearts that through looking at a passage of your word that, that we would draw closer to you. Father, I, I ask a blessing upon each person who's here. I ask a blessing upon those members of our church family who, who aren't with us here this morning. And we ask these things in your son's name. Amen. So as I said, Lent, or the Lenten season, is a time of preparation. It, it's a time of reflection and repentance. Uh, it's a time of prayer, and it is a time of sacrifice, and it's also a time of, of charity. So we prepare, we reflect, we repent, we pray, we sacrifice, and then we give charitably. And as, as God's people, we prepare ourselves for the coming Easter season, and as a part of that preparation, as I said, we, we're asked to look inward inside of ourselves and reflect not only on our past but on our present and potentially on our future and that reflection should cause us to kind of take stock of our lives right the the good and the bad as and as we look at what we see as the bad things things about us that that cause us to be separated from God Part of that reflection should be that it should cause us to repent of those things, to, to turn from them out of our desire to draw closer to God. And as our desire to draw closer to Him and to learn more about Him grows, our, our path to communicate with God through prayer also becomes more clear for us. God wants us to have conversations with Him, not just run to him when we're in a time of crisis. And that brings us to this moment, to, to a topic that, that sometimes we don't like to talk about in terms of us doing it as, as much as we like to talk about the sacrifice that, that others make, as much as we like to talk about the sacrifice that God made through human death by his son, Jesus. So what does it mean for us to sacrifice, not only during the Lenten season, as I said, but, but all the time. What does it mean for, for you to sacrifice? So as we begin this morning, again, I want to I kind of shift your thinking or our thinking just a bit. See, most of the time we, we think about sacrifice with reference to our faith. We tend to think about those things that we have to give up, right? These are things that that I'm going to give up. And sometimes if you're like me, uh, before I came to faith, I used to take this, uh, this list, you know. Well, if, if I become a Christian, these, these are all these things I'm not going to be able to do anymore, right? I, I, I took stock of that. So we tend to focus on what we are going to give up. And if we're really honest with ourselves, we really don't like giving up those things, do we? Because after all, you know, in our lives to a degree, you know, we put them there. And we put them there because we like them. Even though as we have that time of reflection, we realize that maybe that's not exactly something God would like about us. But, um, but we like it. So we begin to take this, this list about all the things I'm going to have to give up. All the things that I'm going to have to sacrifice. But for the next few minutes, I, 
Again, I want us to shift sacrifice away from what we give up and towards what God gave up. The sacrifice that, that God Almighty willingly made for us, the sacrifice that God's Son, Jesus the Messiah, the Christ, allowed to happen for us. And again, as we begin, I'm going to make a statement that might startle you. It, it might make you mad. I hope it doesn't. It might confuse you. But that's kind of my job sometimes. Ready? Nobody throw chairs. Jesus dying on the cross did not save you. Everybody okay? Let me say that again. Jesus dying on the cross did not save you. Now you might be sitting there thinking, wait a minute, that can't be right. My, my whole spiritual life, I've always been pointed to the cross and to the death that Jesus experienced on it as my salvation. Listen. Jesus' death did not save you. What it did was form a path through which you could be saved. There's a difference. We're going to talk about that this morning. Again, let's, let's go back to that passage in Romans. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness that at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Verse 25, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement, Paul wrote. So what's that mean? Well, an atonement is an action. It's, it's a verb. A, an act that someone does in order to make up for wrongdoings, for sins that they have committed in the past. They atone for their sins, right? You may have heard that phrase. But listen, it's not forgiveness those are separate things. And many times people get those two things mixed up, but we, we need to be clear here. Simply, when we realize that you did something that you did something wrong to someone, and you go to them and you apologize, that is an act of atonement. See it? I realize this was wrong and I need to go make things right. So I'm going to go and apologize and that is an act of atonement. At that point, you aren't forgiven of anything. You've just humbled yourself and sacrificed your comfort in order to make an attempt to right a wrong. Okay? Everybody with me? So... God, seeing all of our sin and desiring to have an eternal relationship with us, brings forth the only sacrifice that will allow that relationship to possibly happen. All through the Old Testament, there were these places, you know, we, we read about Sacrifice, animal sacrifices, animal sacrifices. And all these people kept bringing these animals into the temple and sacrificing them. And the blood of that innocent animal shed on the altar covered their sin, but it only did it temporarily. So at some point God said, I'm going to offer a way to have those sins forgiven forever. And I'm going to do it through my son And God made an offer. God allowed His Son to be sacrificed as an offer of atonement. Let 
when you atone for something, you aren't forgiven of anything yet. In essence, God says, here, through the sacrifice of my son, we have a chance to start over. Through my grace, instead of allowing you to get what you deserve, I'm going to give you the opportunity to see your sin, reflect on it, and to see who your sin separates you from, me. See, it's not that God has anything to apologize for. He, he hasn't made a mistake. Those are all ours, right? When God offers Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement, in essence, what he is, do is doing is he is offering all of us a lifeboat. He's offering us a way to salvation through his act of atonement. But it's not forgiveness yet. Forgiveness comes part, or the forgiveness part comes in the middle of a segment of verse 25. It says, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. To be received by faith. Watch. God looks at us and says, here's what we both know, right? We are filled with sin. You are filled with sin because you are human. And I, more than anything, want to have an eternal relationship with you. For you to spend eternity in my presence. Right? The problem is, not only is it a fact that I can't stand sin, but I cannot tolerate sin. I cannot have sin anywhere in my presence. And I want you all, except you have sin, and I can't be around sin. So, since we both also know that there's no way that you can fix this, right? There's no way that you, as we as human beings can get good enough that God goes, oh, well, look how you've cleaned up yourself. Sure, come on in, right? Since we both know that you can't fix this, I'm going to fix it the only way I can with an atonement for those sins. It's an atonement that not only covers your sin, but it's powerful enough to cover all sin from now into eternity. So we've got to ask this question. At this point, the atonement, the offer, has been made. Right? God offered his son as an atonement for sin, as a sacrifice of atonement. So when does the forgiveness part come in? See, we like the forgiveness part, right? When that atonement is received by those that the atonement was offered to, Paul writes, it is to be received by faith. The sacrifice of atonement is to be received. If you receive something, you, you take a hold of it and you bring it into yourself, right? It is to be received by faith. So please hear me. The death of Jesus on the cross wasn't your forgiveness. It was... It was the sacrificial act that was an atonement. You being forgiven by your sin, you, you being forgiven by your sin comes when you accept that act of atonement. And by your faith in that act, accepting not only 
Jesus' death and burial, but also his resurrection, your faith leads you to accepting the act of atonement and accepting God's offer through faith. Then you are saved. Can you see that? Jesus' death on the cross did not save you. Your faith in what happened in that event and what happened after it saves you. The sacrifice is a huge part of your salvation story, but it doesn't become your salvation story until you accept what it was done for. Still with me? So why would God do that? For you. Why, why would God do that for us, right? Well, the, the rest of verse 25 and, and all of verse 26 points to that. It says, he did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Paul says in offering Jesus as a sacrifice of atonement, therefore allowing us to, by our faith, accept that sacrifice, God did that in order to demonstrate his righteousness. So what's that mean? Right? It means that, that God is fair. God is a God of fairness. See, he could have looked down and said, all of those sins you committed in the past, I'm not going to forgive those. Instead, I'm only interested in, in where we go from here. The, those past things, that's your problem, not mine. Thank you, God, that you didn't do that. God, in his fairness and in his righteousness, he chose to wipe away and cover all the sins we had already done. Those things that we deserve to be punished over. Why? Because when we did them, right? Verse 26 says that God was already looking ahead and was including them in the redemption that he knew he was going to offer anyway. You've never done anything in your life that caught God off guard. Nothing. God didn't look down one day when you were 18 and go, whoa, didn't see that coming. Right? Right? God in his fairness, God in his righteousness chose to not only include today's sin and tomorrow's sin, but he also chose to wipe away yesterday's sin. And for that, we should be thankful. The problem is, as human beings, we tend to hold on to yesterday's sin, right? It's our way of continuing to separate ourselves. I would venture to say everybody in this room has had this conversation with themselves. God would never want me because of what I did. You fill in the blank. Right? When I was 16, when I was 17, when I was 21. See, we hold on to that. God's going... I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to give you a gift. And all you have to do is accept it. And when you accept it, not only am I going to handle you from here out, I'm also going to wipe away all that stuff in your past that you've all been worried about. We're going to cover that too. God is a God of fairness. And through that fairness, 
God being fair and just redeems us. He makes us right. Listen, he makes us right when we believe in Jesus. When we place our faith in Jesus. When we place our faith in Jesus' resurrection, in his overcoming death to life. God saw our sin, past and present, and he made a decision to include and cover all of those sins when he gave his son as an atonement for all of those sins. The sacrifice that God made did not save us. It gave us the opportunity to be saved by accepting the atonement through our faith. You can do something wrong and you can go to somebody and you can say, I want to apologize and I want to make this right. You can make an act of atonement. You're not forgiven until that other person looks back and goes, I accept your apology. Right? God offers atonement. God's offer of atonement is not for everyone. It's for everyone who believes. God makes an offer. It's up to you to accept it. I mean, have you ever had a strained relationship with someone and you decide that you're going to be the bigger person? So you go to them and you apologize, but they don't accept your apology? I don't know if that's ever happened to you. It's happened to me. I went to somebody once and I said, you know, I really feel bad about this. And they said, you should. I said, I'd like your forgiveness. And they said, no. They tell you to go away or to get lost or leave. They don't want anything to do with you or your apology. It is too late in their eyes to fix things. You can offer all the apologies you want. I'm never going to accept them. It's too late. And if that's ever happened to you, it hurts, doesn't it? Imagine how God feels when He comes and gives the offer, the sacrifice of atonement, the offer to make things right to the extent that He did, only to have people say, no thanks, I don't want it. I want you to be a part of my family. I want you to spend eternity with me. I do not want you to spend eternity separated from me. And the only way we can do that is for me to make this sacrifice, is for me to make this offer, is for me to make this act of atonement by putting my son and allowing him to die on a cross for his shed blood will cover your sin, not only now, but all through yesterday and all through tomorrow's and all you have to do is by faith accept that. No thanks, I'm good. See, the Lenten season for many people is about giving up things. They give up eating meat or some worldly pleasure or activity that they like, food they enjoy. And they do that in order to sacrifice something to God. Right? I'm going to impress God by what I give up. God's going to look down and go, whoa, look at that. God's not impressed when you say, I'm giving up Brussels sprouts and sauerkraut for Lent. Not. God's not impressed. You can't impress God by what you give up for Lent. Because whatever you give up, it does not measure in any way to what He did. Right? Because I believe that when it comes to considering sacrifice, 
we need to move away from what we do. And we need to focus on what God willingly gave. We need to move away from what we do. We need to move away from what we give up. And we need to move towards a knowledge of what God willingly gave for us. And all He asks in return is that we accept the sacrifice of atonement that He made. See, He doesn't have anything to apologize for. He, he hasn't done anything wrong. He's just giving us this way of going, you know, what I, I want you to be part of my family and, and this is how we're going to do that, right? All he asks is that we accept the sacrifice, we accept that atonement by placing our eternal faith in God's Son. Here's my offer. It's a big one. No thanks, I'm good. Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you've never thought about this before. Maybe you've never thought that you play a role in deciding your eternity. God is again making His offer of atonement this morning. It's up to you whether or not you accept it. Or figuratively you look God in the eye and go, it's okay, I'm good. Jesus' death on the cross did not save you, but it gave, it created a path through which you can be saved. And salvation comes through acceptance. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, I just thank you for this day. I, I, I thank you for these words. Uh, I, I thank you that that you loved us enough that you, you looked down and you said, I, I, need to, I need to offer them salvation. I need to offer them a way to be saved. Father, sometimes we don't physically look at God and go, that's okay, I'm good. But when we come face to face with the offer and we choose to walk away with doing nothing, it's in essence the same thing. Father, if there's somebody here this morning who has been thinking about all of this, who's been considering all of this and has been looking and going, you know, I, I can't give up those things in my life that I know I need to give up in order to have this relationship. Help us to see very clearly, Father, that, that those things that we think about giving up, they, they pale in comparison to what you did. Father, it's, it's my prayer this morning that no one walks out of this building without an assurance through faith that their forgiveness is secure by accepting that offer. Right now, it may be overwhelming for somebody to think about. That's okay. Maybe they just need to pray about that. And in just a moment, there are going to be people around this room who are, are going to be willing to pray with them and for them. Don't let anybody leave here this morning, Father, with a heavy heart or with confusion in their minds. Help us very clearly to see you and to see the offer that you lovingly make to us and for us. Father, we love you. We're honored by your presence here in this place today. And we ask these things in your son's name and for his sake. Amen.
and ask members of our prayer team if they would stand up and move around the room. If, if, you, if you have something on your heart that you need to, you just need to unburden yourself with, they're here to pray with you and to pray for you. I'll be up here if you want to come up and pray with me. But uh, let's all stand as, as our praise band leads us in our hymn. Thank you all for being here this morning. We hope you enjoyed your time here at All Branch. Don't forget your kids. Um, I don't have that many car seats. Um, but uh, we appreciate everybody being here today. Uh, in just a moment, we're going uh, we're gonna to sing our um, uh, doxology. Not an invitation. We already did that. We're going to sing our doxology and then you're dismissed. Um, but uh, uh, remember all the things going on this week. And um, if you're on the mission team, I would like just a couple of minutes of your time, so we'll meet up here. Uh, I'm going to ask David Todd if he would close in a word of prayer, and then we'll sing our doxology, and you are dismissed. Have a blessed day.
have a great day.